So everybody, here we have it. iPadOS 18.1 Beta 6 is out to all developers to try out and test out and see exactly what changed, if anything at all. Now, I've been personally dealing with some bugs and things that I hopefully will get fixed, like the keyboard disappearing sometimes, some things freezing up, my home screen kind of going into springboard mode. I will say that I haven't lost any data. Normally, a simple reset does fix the situation that I'm in, but it's something that I have been dealing with, and hopefully Beta 6 does fix that. So let's get right into this video. I do briefly want to bring up some of the performance issues I was dealing with, with iPadOS 18.1 beta 5. So my iPad as well as my iOS device, my iPhone 16 Pro Max, we're dealing with some springboard resets. Again, it's nothing detrimental that happened to the data that I was playing with. A simple restart would fix it or even just quitting out of an application, but sometimes I would get the little spinning wheel that would occur that would end up kind of making me restart or wait about a minute in order for my iPad to restart. So that was a little bit of an issue. I also had some phantom keyboard issues where sometimes the keyboard would disappear or you would only see the overlay of the letters and the rest of the keyboard would disappear. So just some small bugs that I had to deal with with iPadOS 18.1 beta 5 but hopefully beta 6 does alleviate those issues and supposedly they really do and now i do want to briefly talk about battery life because i continue to say that battery life has been one of the best parts about 18.1 especially on my m4 ipad pro so if we go on with some of these days you can see that we're getting about seven hours and 18 minutes of screen on time on a single charge which is pretty amazing when it comes to the ipad as you can see there's some glitches here because here it says no battery was taken up and we got all these days worth of screen on time 24 hours 24 hours i think i left the lock screen on by accident on these days but then you have a day like monday 11 hours and 37 minutes, another day down here, four hours and four minutes. So you can see that it does range depending on what type of activity I'm doing, but for the most part, seven to nine hours on intense usage on the M4 iPad Pro is not unheard of, and it's actually something that's very common in what I've been getting with the battery life. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this video. And the first thing I'm gonna show off is going to be the build number and build size. I took a screenshot of it, and we're at about 906 megabytes for iPadOS 18.1 beta 6. So give yourself at least two gigs of open storage for this to install and install it correctly, maybe even a little bit more. And then in terms of build number, let's check if we go into the about section, then go into where it says iPadOS version. We have 22B5069 lowercase a which means we are very close to the RC edition, so probably in the next week or two we'll get the RC edition. And then finally, iPadOS 18.1 is set to release to the entire public by October 28th, when hopefully Apple gives us some new hardware as well. So definitely stay tuned for that, and we'll have a whole video talking about everything you can do with 18.1 on both iOS and iPadOS, as well as macOS Sequoia 15.1. And now we do have a few things that are actually visibly new. So if we go over here to the home screen, go into your control center, press a little plus sign on the control center and then add a control. There's a few new widgets depending on which device you're using that will be available to you. So on the iPad, on iPadOS, the measure icon is brand new. So you can add that to your control center and it'll open up the measure app. Another one that came up is a level app, but that level application or level widget is only for iOS and not iPadOS. So do keep that in mind because I don't believe there is a gyroscope in iPads and that does make some sense. Another one that did come to the iPad is AirDrop. So the AirDrop widget is available. And then lastly, we did get the satellite widget only if you have an SOS enabled iPhone. So do keep that in mind, it will not be on your iPad. But those are two slash four new widgets that are now available on Control Center. Another interesting one that you might've noticed earlier when I went into the notes application is that the new Siri animation or the Siri help button for writing tools is brand new. So if I tap on here, you can see that it does bring up the normal kind of situation in terms of being able to proofread and rewrite, change it to friendlier tone or professional tone or a more concise tone. But now you see that there's a little pencil inside of the Apple Intelligence icon, which is a nice little touch. So now in any situation, anywhere in the UI where you can use Apple Intelligence to help you in terms of a writing tool, that little icon will appear. Another new one that appeared is under notifications. So we did get scheduled summaries or just summaries in general when it comes to individual applications. And when you get a bunch of them all at once, you can see here that the summaries do show, so you can see that I have 66 different notifications from Redfin. Yes, I'm a Redfin addict, but you can see that it's kind of summarizing everything, but the new part about it is that we now have a notification badge on the actual notification to let you know how many messages are being summarized at once. So you can see here with Amazon, there's two here. You can see that with Redfin, there's 66. With my home application, there's 14, Apple TV, three. And then of course, if there's nothing there, that means there was only one instance of that notification that does not even need to be summarized. So that is now coming to at least let you know that whatever Apple intelligence is summarizing for you, it's based on X amount of notifications. So if you do have an application or maybe in the messages app where you miss 100 messages and it does summarize it in two lines, at least try and be aware that there's 100 messages trying to be summarized in just two lines versus maybe just one or two messages. Additionally, we did get some new splash screens. So this is the new splash screen when you open up the app store. So it's letting you know that there is now a more powerful search 
which is something that's interesting because again, Apple Intelligence should help out with search functionalities. Another new pop-up comes up in the mail application, letting you know how Apple Intelligence is integrating into the native mail app. So you can see that we have priority messaging, message summaries, and then smart replies as well. So again, all the tools that we've gotten used to with 18.1, it's now kind of getting ready for its showcase to the public come the end of October. And then Apple Music did get a new splash screen as well, saying introducing the new tab. They also have music haptics, so a new way for users on iPhone who are deaf or hard of hearing to experience music. And then you have SharePlay on more devices as well. And there's a new feature, it didn't get it to work on iPadOS, but iOS apparently has a new feature to directly share a song to TikTok to then allow you to use that song in whatever TikTok video you are creating. And then lastly, a new pop-up when you start to use Siri for the first time, especially in your settings application. If you tap on the search button in your settings app, this will be the first thing that pops up, which is basically saying, ask Siri how. So those how-tos that Apple Intelligence gives you whenever you wanna maybe do something, it'll give you a step-by-step -step guide. So I'll show you this right now. How do I set dark mode? So as you saw there, it gave me the step-by-step -step directions on how to actually do something in the settings application via Apple Intelligence. So I think they're just reminding you if you go into settings and go on the search button here, of course iPadOS isn't showing it right now because I X'd out of it, but that is something that you will see the first time that you try to search something in your settings application. So that's everything that came to iPadOS 18.1 beta 6, more so bug fixes and improvements, some small visual changes, there's a few extra things that are happening with iOS, so definitely stay tuned for Jeff's video on what to expect with iOS 18.1 Beta 6, but let's finish up this video, everybody. So again, like you saw, there weren't too many differences from Beta 5 to Beta 6. We're just getting closer and closer to that final release, which should be towards the end of October at some sort of event that Apple has, kind of releasing new iPads and new Macs with the M4 lineup. So let's see exactly when we should be getting this overall, but I do think we are getting closer and closer. Like I mentioned, I was dealing with some bugs with beta 5 which should be fixed with beta 6 according to some of the bug fixes and we got some new visual changes as well not too many but again we're just getting closer to the rc edition which means these things should be finalized and getting ready to go to be released to everybody else now i do want to give a quick psa that 18.0.1 is out if you do want to install ipad os 18.0.1 on your ipad I know some people dealt with a brick situation on 18.0 update, but that should be resolved with the 18.0.1 update. But that'll do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.